Another year has gone by, and once again I am left wondering why I even bother with this dumb shit anymore. The Game Awards, which airs later tonight, uh, well, later this afternoon if you live in the Pacific, and later this evening if you live in the East, has some very questionable nominees this year. This year, which has seen some of the most disappointing releases since 2020. Now, 2021 wasn't great either, but it was a much better year compared to the nonsense that has happened in 2022. Not even counting all of the games that have been delayed, such as Hogwarts Legacy, for example, and just counting, obviously, the games that just came out this year, the quality of most of the major releases in 2022 have been extremely underwhelming, and high-profile games in particular, AAA games specifically that have gotten this overwhelmingly positive response from your typical uh, drones in the arena of gaming journalism, somehow most of these games have managed to actually become worse over time compared to their predecessors that were released years ago. So I'm going to go through the major categories here to emphasize why I won't be wasting my time with this fucking garbage. So here are all the nominees for the 2022 Game Awards. I'm just going to go through the major ones. I'm not going to go through all of them. But let's start with the big one, right? Let's start with Game of the Year. So we have A Plague Tale Requiem. We have Elden Ring. We have God of War Ragnarok, we have Horizon Forbidden West, we have Stray, and we have Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Just judging from the list right here, probably the game that deserves it the most would be A Plague Tale Requiem. I haven't actually played that game, but just judging from what I've seen of it, that probably deserves it the most on this list. The games that deserve it the least would be Horizon Forbidden West, God of War Ragnarok, and especially Elden Ring. But because the Game Awards is based off of popularity and nonsense, I believe that the game that's going to win this category is going to be Elden Ring. Not because Elden Ring deserves it, or because Elden Ring is the best game that came out this year. It's not even the best game that came out the month it released, which was back in February. Elden Ring will probably take Game of the Year at the Game Awards because it's the most popular game that's come out this year. It's the most popular game among the six nominees. But you have to think, a game that has as many faults as Elden Ring does, even though that the game is extremely popular, how is it possible that a piece of shit like Elden Ring could possibly be nominated for Game of the Year? Even within a year that's been full of delays, how is it remotely possible that a game like Elden Ring or a game like God of War Ragnarok, which I thought was good but not Game of the Year worthy. A game like Horizon Forbidden West, same thing as God of War Ragnarok, it was good but not Game of the Year worthy. How are these games, these AAA games, deserving of this award when they have so many issues? To exercise my point, my stance, just using two examples here from the list. The games that will get the most votes out of this list, those being God of War Ragnarok and Elden Ring. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of both games. So taking a look at the pros here for God of War Ragnarok, the game has excellent writing, storytelling, huge improvement over God of War 2018. I've read accounts online from idiots who believe otherwise, but, but of course the video game community is not known for intelligence. The reception to the Callisto Protocol is emphasis of that enough. The game also has a new playable character with Atreus. You know, Atreus is pretty fun to play as. The game has excellent motion capture, graphics, direction, and musical score. The game has amazing boss fights. The boss fights were one of the best parts about God of War Ragnarok as a whole. The game has no severe performance issues. In fact, on PlayStation 5, I experienced no glitches at all of any kind, or any slowdown with the frame rate. Of course, I was playing in performance mode, but that's besides the point. And the game has effective set pieces. So God of War Ragnarok has a lot of strengths, but what about the cons? Well, the game has a tight combat camera, which was also a huge issue with God of War 2018. Uh, length. 
the game is too long. Uh, the game only has one new weapon. So if you compare it to the older God of War games, there was more weapon variety in the older games compared to the newer ones. And God of War Ragnarok has not changed that. The upgrades are copy and paste. There's really nothing new when it comes to the upgrades in God of War Ragnarok, which is a huge problem, given the fact that it's a sequel. Some of the enemies are damage sponges. In fact, quite a few of the enemies are damage sponges. So that's a problem. And... Last but not least, and most importantly, the game is too scripted. There's too many walking segments that you cannot get out of that are forced on you. And that's actually been the, the biggest problem, uh, the biggest critique that I've seen online with God of War Ragnarok is that the game is, uh, it plays like a movie too much at times. And that whole level with Atreus, uh, in particular, a lot of players didn't seem to care for that. And I understand why. I liked it personally from a narrative point of view, but from a gameplay perspective, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't anything special. Just putting it lightly. So that's God of War Ragnarok. It has kind of a, an even uh, split between pros and cons. Let's look at Elden Ring. The cons for Elden Ring. Again, this is a game that sold what sixteen million copies thus far this year. This is a game that's been overrated the hell and back from both gaming journalists and the fucking morons in the Souls community and the general gaming community at large. This is a game that undoubtedly will go on to win Game of the Year, even if it somehow magically doesn't get it at the Game Awards. It will still get it from several different, if not dozens upon dozens of different gaming publications, for sure. But again, how can that be? How can it be that this game is nominated for Game of the Year when it has so many issues? So. Going down the list here, the game has a lack of a proper narrative and basically has no plot, which means it has no story, which is funny because the game was also nominated for another category, which is a head scratcher, but I'll get to that. The game had severe day one performance issues, apparently both on PC and on console. The game is running on an outdated engine that's years and years old, which is what I call Bethesda syndrome. The game has brainless enemy AI, so most of the enemies in the game, similar to other Souls games, they're not very smart. As soon as you learn their behavior patterns, it's very easy to uh, exploit them, and the game, for the most part, becomes a joke after that. The game is too long. It's uh, 130 hours around that time frame if you go and complete most of the bosses that are available in the game, the core bosses. It generally takes around that amount of time to complete. The open world is empty as fuck. It's bland as fuck. There is nothing interesting going on in the lands between, as they call it. There's a lack of optional mounts. And so you can't go underwater anywhere in this game. You can't climb on a dragon and, you know, explore the skies as it were. You're stuck on the fucking horse the entire fucking game. Oh, and uh, that horse isn't upgradable and it controls like shit. All of this I went over in my retrospective. There's a reason why that video is as long as it is. Because the game is literally that bad. But I'm not done. There's more. They have boss fights that are built around the fucking horse mount, which doesn't make any sense. A perfect example would be uh, the ice dragon or whatever that you uh, fight in that, that uh, ice level. The mountaintops of the giants. I just remembered the, the name of that location. The boss fights are horribly fucking designed. Primarily for two reasons. For one, most of the bosses are way too large, and it's to the point where the aspect ratio of the game can't accurately depict the characters on screen, the bosses on screen in their entirety, which is ridiculous. And an even bigger issue are the AoE attacks, AoE standing for area of effect. The bosses simply have too much range with a lot of their attacks, so no matter which way you dodge on screen, or no matter what you do, you're likely going to get hit, which is absurd. There are other issues with the boss fights, such as the, the shit level design, but I went over all that in my retrospective. I'm not going to get into all that here. The boss fights in the open world are recycled. You'll run into the same bosses over and over and over again in the open world. There's at least three different bosses that I ran into twice during my time with Elden Ring in the open world. One of them was that Deathbird thing, which I think is the worst boss in the entire game, or at least the most annoying boss in the entire game. 
The cave and dungeon areas feel the same, which goes back to the issue with repetition. The combat mechanics are clunky and outdated, which is why there's been so many jokes about the game being referred to as simply Dark Souls 4 in an open world. The progression system is ridiculously expensive, to the point where motherfuckers were going up on eBay and spending real world money on rooms, which is like, why the fuck would you do something like that? The writing with the lore, the sparse lore that I might add, that's very ambiguous, is also god awful and the same can be said about the other Souls games. There's a difficulty spike that's very unbalanced close to the end of the game, which is also the mountaintops of the giants, that central location towards the very end of the game. There's a completely absurd difficulty spike in that section of Elden Ring that clearly was rushed. Then you have a horrible one minute ending, just the base ending, not the multiple different endings that they have in the game, but just the core ending. It's only one minute long, which is completely laughable for a game as long as Elden Ring is. Not only is the ending short and unsatisfying, but it doesn't even give the player anything, uh, no major rewards for completing the game in the first place, which makes the whole thing a pointless waste of time. Oh, and the game is also built around a 10-year-old formula that's just old at this point and hasn't evolved. So those are some of the many issues that Elden Ring has, but those are the major ones. Now let's look at what the pros for Elden Ring is. The game has some interesting art direction. That's it. Some interesting art direction. Some of the musical tracks are okay. Not so bad, but that's about it. Everything else in the game is shit. Hell, if I look at this article on IGN, this is really where it hammers home. My point as to why this game is so fucking terrible. And why I hate the fucking idiots in this uh, fucking Souls community. This uh, from software community, this fucking fan base, and why I refer to them as a cult, because that's what they are. Even the fucking creator, the director of this mess, Hidetaka Miyazaki, he has no idea why Elden Ring has become so popular. Even he doesn't get it. This is the guy who fucking directed a lot of these games, right? A lot of the Dark Souls games, he directed Bloodborne, he directed Sekiro. He directed this fucking mess. Even he doesn't understand why this shit is popular. But it's, it's really simple if you think about it. Some of the commenters here, I think there were at least two comments that really nailed it. Well, I'm not going to scroll through all these to find them. But essentially what it is is that Elden Ring has become popular and has sold 16 million copies for two reasons. Word of mouth and hype. Word of mouth and hype is how video games are sold today. But word of mouth and hype do not represent quality. They are not a representation of quality. They are not a grounded, concrete representation of what's good and what's not in this industry. If you look at the nominees for Game of the Year, none of these games really deserve the award because none of them really push video games forward. The most popular game on the list, Elden Ring, is a game that's built on an outdated ass engine with clunky ass combat mechanics that are years and years old, and it has the highest chance of winning game of the year. So one must wonder, is the game of the year award really meant to uh, recognize games and praise games that push the medium forward, or is it really truly just meant to highlight the games that are the best of the best within their individual release year. Because if it's the latter, Elden Ring still doesn't deserve to be on this fucking list, if that's the case. Again, it wasn't even the best game that came out in February. The best game that came out in February was Horizon Forbidden West. It goes back to what I was saying before. This list of nominees along with the other categories is built around a popularity contest. It's not built around logic and it's certainly not built around common sense. So the game of the year category is bullshit. If I look at best game direction, God of War Ragnarok should take that over everything else on this list. That's not up for debate. If I look at best narrative, once again, God of War Ragnarok should take that 
just judging from what I've played anyway. I haven't played a Plague Tale Requiem. Out of what I've played this year, it should be God of War Ragnarok. Again, why Elden Ring, a game that doesn't even have a fucking plot, doesn't have a plot structure at all, and has very sparse interaction with AI companions, or NPC characters in general, why that game has been nominated for Best Narrative is just a perfect case of brain damage. So already, you know, those are your top three categories right there. Game of the Year, Best Game Direction, and Best Narrative. Those are the most important three right there. And all three are bullshit. So why would I want to waste my time with these other categories if you can't even get the important ones right? It's a sad day and age that we're living in when it comes to the video game industry. I feel like each year I'm just a broken record and I keep repeating the same thing. But of course, what I'm saying is actually credible. It's factual. The quality within the video game industry has fallen sharply over the last 15 plus years, and it continues to get worse. I'm not wasting my time watching this bullshit. And even if you were just watching just for the announcements, like, you know, some of the new game announcements, new trailers and all that, you can catch all that shit after the fact. Why would anyone in their right mind sit through this? just to watch some fucking trailers here and there. Makes no sense. I won't be wasting my time with it.